What is it that compels a man to leave the comfort of familiar shores to venture into the unknown corners of the world? Is it curiosity, ambition, or perhaps the indomitable human spirit that constantly pushes us to explore and to conquer? This is the story of an explorer, born in a time when new lands were just waiting to be discovered and nations competed for the treasures and riches of the East. Embarking on treacherous voyages, this explorer named Abel Tasman became a testament to man's quest for discovery. However, even the most celebrated lives can be blemished. Although many places proudly bear Tasman's name, his legacy was not without controversy. Let's delve into the tumultuous life of this fascinating man, full of extraordinary triumphs and an unfortunate controversial downfall. Born in 1603 in a small village in the north of the Netherlands, Abel Tasman was raised in the embrace of the serene countryside. From a young age, Tasman displayed a keen interest in maritime affairs. His fascination with the vastness of the ocean and the mysteries it held captivated his imagination. In his pursuit to explore unknown lands, Abel Tasman enrolled in the Dutch East India Company in 1633 a prestigious trade organization in Holland known for its ventures across the seas. This company, also known as the VOC, sought to establish trade routes to the far corners of the world. They aimed to secure valuable spices and highly sought-after Asian commodities. Under the umbrella of the VOC, Tasman boarded several expeditions to the East Indies. These voyages served as both trade ventures and exploratory missions. Tasman's skills as a navigator and seafarer proved invaluable as he charted unknown waters. Playing a significant role in expanding the Dutch influence across the seas, his voyages ventured beyond the well-travelled routes of his predecessors. After being part of a few smaller voyages, an exciting opportunity awaited him as he prepared for his first major expedition, the exploration of the Southern Hemisphere. In 1642, Abel Tasman embarked on a major expedition in search for the elusive Great Southland, now known as South America and Australia. The company wanted to find out whether there was any southern lands that they could exploit or if there was a passage across the Pacific to Chile, setting sail from Batavia, now known as Jakarta, in August, Tasman led two ships, the Heemskerk and the Zeehan. After resupplying in Mauritius, they sailed eastward, and finally, on November 24, 1642, they sighted a rugged coastline, which Tasman named Van Diemen's Land, after the governor of the Dutch East India Company. This was later officially renamed Tasmania. Encountering the indigenous Maori people, communication and trade were limited. Continuing north, they faced dangerous reefs, forcing a change of course eastward. Following their initial exploration, Tasman had originally planned to continue northward, However, he decided to change the course and sail towards the east due to unfavourable wind conditions. On the 13th of December, their eyes beheld the site of a previously undiscovered land, the alluring northwest coast of the South Island in New Zealand. This groundbreaking encounter marked a historic milestone, as Tasman and his crew became the first Europeans ever to see this uncharted territory. Needing repairs and supplies, Tasman decided to return to Batavia. He discovered Tonga and the Fiji Islands on his long way back. The journey back was difficult, but they arrived in June 1643. Despite not setting foot on Australian soil or even sighting during the expedition, Tasman's ship bypassed it, proving that it was indeed an island and not an expansive continent. This expedition significantly contributed to the mapping of the Australian continent, expanding geographical knowledge. Despite the notable achievements of Tasman and his crew during their influential voyage, the Dutch East India Company higher-ups expressed dissatisfaction. The reason for their discontents lay that Tasman had failed to discover profitable trade routes for the company on this initial expedition. However, undeterred by the setback, Tasman was again entrusted with a critical mission at the beginning of 1644. This time his objective was establishing a navigable sea passage linking Indonesia and South America. Notably, Tasman would lead a fleet of three ships, Lehman, Zemu and Brack, demonstrating the company's commitments to the endeavour. However, he missed the Torres Strait between New Guinea and Australia, 
Undeterred, Tasman continued along the north coast of Australia, mapping its shores as he sailed westwards along the Gulf of Carpentario. He meticulously documented his observations of Australia and its inhabitants, which was then named New Holland. In August 1644, Tasman returned to Batavia, where the Dutch East India Company expressed mixed reactions to his findings. While trade prospects were not as promising as expected, Tasman's contributions to geographical knowledge were significant. The company was disappointed with the limited exploration and sought a more persistent explorer for future expeditions. Tasmania and New Zealand remained unexplored by Europeans for over a century, while mainland Australia was rarely visited, often by coincidence. However, Tasman's explorations laid the foundation for future European encounters and the eventual colonisation of these lands. In November 1644, Tasman gained a prestigious role on the Council of Justice in Batavia. After completing several other missions and journeys, he returned to Batavia in January 1649. Tasman's journey took an unexpected turn when he was entangled in an upsetting controversy. Allegations surfaced regarding his involvement in the hanging of a crew member. The absence of a fair trial worsened the situation. In the face of mounting evidence and a strong case against him, Tasman was found guilty, suspended, and required to compensate the sailor's relatives. The weight of this verdict left him in profound professional and personal turmoil. Reinstated in January 1651, Tasman spent his remaining years in Batavia, where he prospered as a major landowner in Batavia. Abel Tasman passed away on October 10, 1659, leaving his property to his wife and daughter. So what do you think of this mighty explorer and his adventurous account? Share your thoughts in the comment section and subscribe to our channel for more captivating stories.